So now it's time to glue these two halves together. Uh, you see I've you know, chopped everything out on both sides. And before you actually do put any glue down, uh, do a dry run and uh, make sure that everything that you cut is in the right place and it fits together. And again, make sure you have your reference marks um, because they will tell you where to glue everything up or how to line everything up. So uh, I'm just going to be using a standard yellow type bond. sides You don't want to be too stingy with glue here because you want to make sure this is stuck together. Just putting a slide around a bit. And basically just yeah, slap a bunch of clamps on, uh, leave it to dry and that's it. So here I've got the body blank glued up and well it's likely that you won't have both halves perfectly lined up so the cavities that you cut won't line up perfectly. Um, so well you just have to clean them up and the most important thing is this bed area. So you want to make sure this is perfectly flat and smooth and even and well, as well as you can, uh, kind of get it square to the sides or the kind of the whole thing so it's nice and square. Uh, before you do this though, you want to kind of roughly square up the body blank. Um, that's just so that you don't get any kind of false readings when you're measuring stuff uh, for square and etc. So I'm just going to use a chisel, um, pare down the bed as well as I can, and then I'll finish up with a, a file or something. But um, this is something you want to be careful with because this will affect the quality of your plane in the end. So be careful and just do as good of a job as you can. Also, um, it's not just the bed, but you'll have to most probably clean up this uh, front throat here. And also the wear, you, put, you can't see it in this shot, but um, underneath the mouth you want to make sure that's nice and uh, smooth as well. Because that's where your chips will be coming out, so you want to make sure there's a, no resistance for the chips so they don't get jammed. So with the body all done, uh, you know, all squared up, cleaned up, etc, we can turn our attention to the tote. This is a template I'm going to make, uh, because I plan on doing a few of these, so I'm going to make a template to keep it all consistent. I'll also be using this template as a routing template. 
but obviously you can kind of you know draw this design directly onto your blank. Now the design, um, you can see this kind of grid. These are one inch squares. So uh, using that measurement, uh, you can draw a one inch square grid on your blank or template, and you can basically copy my design if you like. Um, you know, you just kind of pick the intersection points of, of this template line here uh, with the grid and just join up the lines. Um, I'm going to be cutting out the template with a coping saw and then smoothing it out with a file uh, just to create my template. But if you're going to do this onto your like actual blank, then you'll want to use the drill method I used in my previous jack plane video. Um, basically, you just drill a series of holes all the way around following the curve in here as well and then take a coping saw or something and just um, kind of connect up the dots or your holes and then smooth the outline out. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple method um, and it, it, if you have you know trouble or whatever you can see my jack plane video on how I did that but um, you know that's basically two methods you can use a router with a template or you can use the drilling this time I'm going to be used the, uh, the router so I'm going to make this template uh, transfer it onto my blank and then uh, you know route out and then smooth round over the corners etc. Now one thing to do uh, well, keep in mind when you're rounding this out etc uh, I said this in my jackpin video as well but if you haven't seen it you don't want to this kind of piece here from here down all this will be uh, mortised into the body of the plane so you obviously want to keep this all nice and square now you, when you're actually smoothing this off the plane you want to round up to about maybe here with files and then you know smooth it all out whatever up above here but only do this bit like these bottom bits here after you've glued it into the plane because if you do it too early then you might actually go below the level of the uh, the mortise and it will look pretty ugly so wait uh, until you glued this actual tote into the body before you start shaping the bottom bits of these curves here. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you after I've uh, made some progress on the tote. So here you can see I've uh, drew my template uh, outline onto here and you can see it's actually slanted this way. Uh, this is so that I can line up the grain here, it goes along here and I want to line it up along this kind of horn here, uh, this kind of line because this will provide more strength. Um, if you line it up this way, parallel to the kind of this base here, um, you'll get lots of little bits of short grain here, so it's uh, not as strong. So I've tilted it slightly, so it kind of flows down this kind of direction. And now I'm just going to drill a series of holes uh, just around here to kind of rough cut this thing out. <laughs> drilled here and I'm just basically taking a little cooking saw and sawing out these uh, little webby bits where I, where I couldn't actually drill. This is, well, if you have a drill press, press at least, is that you can, well, drill perpendicular to the surface and uh, you wouldn't have to, when you actually go to use the cooking saw, you don't have to be so careful in keeping it uh, kind of square to the face uh, because obviously the drill holes will make your saw go relatively square. Um, making the, the actual kind of sides of the uh, kind of tote square isn't really important because you'll be shaping it anyway later uh, rounding most of these edges over 
so it's not you know a critical thing but it, it makes things a bit more consistent and uh, a bit neater I guess. Um, so I'm just going to continue sawing away sawing away all these webbed bits here uh, and get the whole plane blank out uh, then I'll go on to routing the, the rest off and cleaning it up. So I've got my template now double sided uh, taped down to my blank and I'm just going to take a router uh, and kind of clean up the edge here so it's nice and square to the face. Got my hearing protection on and it's uh, going to go See here I've got the uh, tote all sort of well routed out and now the next thing to do is obviously to round over these corners. Um, I don't want to round over all the corners here, uh, I only want to round over the ones uh, where I'll be gripping. So along here, all the way down and this front edge all the way up to about around here somewhere. So I'll be leaving all this front piece here, all this down here. Uh, kind of square and I'll probably make a, a slight chamfer around there just to knock off the corner but um, again as I said earlier you don't want to round off below around kind of this point here because um, you want to make sure this sits uh, like this in your plane and you don't want to kind of round over too deep into here otherwise obviously this will go below the surface of your plane um, you want to kind of round these ones off after you've uh, kind of glued it into your mortise in your plane body and uh, that will let you kind of smooth everything into the plane. Um, same for this front surface here obviously but uh, this will be flat so you won't be rounding over you'll be kind of scooping it down and um, it's just a, a simple process of kind of choosing your tool of choice. I've got a, uh, a bunch of Iwasaki kind of floats in curved and flat profiles and I'm just going to use them to um, kind of, you know, take this material off. Um, actually I'll just flip this round. So, um, you know, there's not really much kind of method to this, it's just just want to shape this curve to fit your hand and you just keep testing in there, uh, holding it, gripping it, and just shape it to how you like. And after you've rough, roughed it out with your files or whatever, um, you just take some sandpaper, clean it up, and we can get on to drilling and uh, kind of chopping the mortise out in the plain body to fit the tote. Here I've got my kind of roughly finished tote. And the next thing we need to do is to mark out this mortise. Now, the marking is kind of important because uh, there's a few things you have to keep in mind. Now, with your blade in place, you want to make sure that your tote, when you've placed it, is not too far forward because otherwise you won't be able to tap the iron with your hammer. And you don't want it too far back because it will just kind of destroy the balance of the plane, I think. So, you know close but not too close and keep in mind that you do actually have to set this down uh, so that you can actually get it a bit closer than you might initially think um, but you know set your uh, front and back position using that kind of criteria after you've done that you just mark out your uh, plain tote dimensions on your stock and you can just you know uh, drill it out chop it out, you know, use whatever method you choose to take this waste out. Now the depth of your mortise is going to be uh, this kind of bottom kind of, of this curve here down. Mine is about 21 millimeters but you know obviously depending on how you made your tote it could be different. Um, so you just want to chop down to that level and to make a, a slightly tighter fit, obviously you should be test fitting like while you're chopping and pairing etc, but you can slant this front angle a little bit backwards, 
maybe one or two degrees, so that when you actually go to tap this into the mortise, it will wedge itself in 